So we left off part one of this series with a particularly cruel cliffhanger. Dennis hanging from the literal cliff that he created in my house by stepping through my ceiling. Way to go, Dennis. Oh my God, Dennis just fell down. From now on, I'm gonna call this the Dennis hole. Hi, Dennis. Seriously, man. I could have died. But we're done now and I'm finally ready to unveil what I'm calling the world's most comfortable gaming setup. Let's head inside. Now we weren't quite done last time when our shooting session got cut a little short, so I'll catch you guys up on what all was done in the meantime. First, the contractors finished their handiwork, adding insulation, drywall, electrical, and new flooring. The contrast between the original room and the upgraded one is stark. But enough about that, let's talk about the real upgrades. I used a 2-inch PVC pipe to route cables to the back of the Samsung KS9500 4K SUHD TV that they graciously provided when they sponsored this project. Only with a twist. Thanks to the One Connect input box, I can handle all four of the HDMI 2.0 inputs, each of which is capable of driving the full 3840 by 2160 resolution of this television at up to 60 Hz through a single cable to the TV. Mounting gear to the wall was done in a number of ways to demonstrate the versatility of this approach. For light items, Double-sided 3M tape is fine, but for heavier items like the custom gaming rig, it's nice to have this wall either plywood backed or with plywood over top the way that I've done it, so you don't have to worry about finding a stud when you want to screw something in. In total, the wall contains an Xbox One, which is more to demonstrate how additional devices could be added, I know it won't read discs this way, a network switch, a USB charging hub, and all of my controllers on a cool little shelf I found at Ikea. Let's take a moment to check out that custom wall-mounted PC. It's rocking an Intel Core i7-6700K, 16 gigs of dual-channel DDR4 from Corsair, and a GTX 1070 Founders Edition, all in a Lian Li PC-06S aluminum and tempered glass case. Now I know that I only built this thing a short while ago, but it's also just been upgraded with individually sleeved green cables from CableMod and RGB lighting with a remote control so it can actually be turned all the way off when complete blackness is desired. Time for the biggest challenge of this project, mounting the TV. Step one was to figure out where the devil to put it, something that's very difficult to eyeball by the way. Then step two was to secure it. I actually ordered two other mounts before reaching out to Kanto for help, and they sent over their F6080, which solved all my problems. This sucker mounts with six beefy screws into the wood roof supports and can handle up to 200 pounds of entertainment goodness. Yeah, good. Which is good because this TV is one heavy mother. I plugged it into the power outlet behind it. There's an extra plug there for a soundbar upgrade in the future if needed. And with a lot of help, got it in position, locked it in place, tucked the cables behind it, and wait a minute, I need a chair. But not just any chair. A chair that allows the user to recline at the perfect angle to view the ceiling mounted TV straight on. Okay, I think I got it, little man. Okay. Oh. There we go. Oh. This yellow thing I ordered off Amazon was horrible and cost $400. So I reached out to Love Sack and they hooked us up with the pillow sack and a super comfy cover for it. This thing rocks. So at this point, I could have easily stopped the project and said, okay, mission accomplished. Wow, there's a lot of magnets. But I wanted to make the room a comfy play area for my kids as well. So I added a fun magnet wall, a couple tipped over bookshelves, and another small beanbag chair to sit and read, and finally, a couple of end tables for the pillow sack. But did it work? Actually, yeah. A lot of things came together to make this one of the most unbelievable movie watching and gaming experiences that I have ever encountered. First is all the technology in the TV. At this viewing distance, 4K absolutely makes a difference, but there's more to it than that. It features quantum dot technology, which we've covered in more detail before, to achieve better energy efficiency, keeping the room cooler, 
and both the better color performance and increased peak brightness of 1000 nits that allow this set to meet the requirements for the UHD Premium HDR standard. In a nutshell, HDR means more details in the high and low lights of the scene for a viewing experience that is much closer to what you would get in the version of the movie that was mastered for the theater. And while HDR does require a supported player and HDR mastered content, the onboard Netflix app in Samsung's Tizen OS handles it, and some content is starting to show up already, with much more coming in the summer. Other Tizen highlights include Voice Search, which you can see in action here, PS Now with a DualShock controller, and, for me anyway, the free Plex app that lets me stream off of my home Plex server. Woo. Now I want to take a moment to talk then about the curve. Normally I'm not convinced that it makes that much of a difference to the viewer's immersion in the content, especially on a TV. But here, with the screen just a few feet away, far enough to focus comfortably, but close enough to occupy about as much of my field of view as a theater screen, it works really well. And I even got Brandon, our resident cinema purist, to sign off on it saying, quote, it's surprisingly cool, and he even pointed out that it is an awesome solution to a problem that many of us have faced, wanting to lie on our backs watching a video with our phone above us, only to have our arms get tired or the phone accidentally fall. Please, for the love of everything, if you game on a TV, make sure you're in game mode. But once you get that sorted out, what can I say? It is awesome. The gaming experience is every bit as comfy and immersive as you'd imagine. I definitely prefer the 16 by 9 aspect ratio with a large screen to a 3 display surround setup with bezels in the middle. And all the same things that make movies awesome on this thing, popping colors, strong contrast, and the curve, make it fantastic for gaming. I've already had Luke over for some two-player fun, and I doubt it'll be his last visit. Overall, I'm really pleased with what we've accomplished here. I wasn't sure how well the concept would work in practice, but thanks to the super comfy seat, confidence-inspiring mount, and this great TV, it turned out amazing. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, well, you know where that button is, but if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out the link to where you can buy some of the gear that we feature in our videos at Amazon in the video description below. If you really liked the video, you can consider supporting us by buying a cool shirt like this one and joining our community forum where you can ask your tech questions, answer other people's tech questions, and generally just talk shop with other enthusiasts. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, hmm, gee, what should I watch next? And maybe check out that video over on Channel Super Fun. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again to Samsung. And thank you, sweetheart, for helping. <laughs> what else can we do on this one? Oh, lots of stuff. Like how much stuff? A hundred. hundred? That's not to do. That will, then we'll need mommy too. Yeah, I think so.